we we have the reality of a rule which requires multiple conditions be met. And if all those conditions are met, we have to evaluate whether an exception to the rule overrides those. And in addition, what has become extremely clear is we have to be masters of status in the game of basketball. Mastery of status is something that elevates you as a basketball official. If you are aware of status, which we all are responsible to be aware of, team control, no team control. Is the ball live? Is the ball dead? Does the ball have backcourt status, frontcourt status? All of these things are constantly changing throughout the game. And if we have our finger on the pulse, oh, thank goodness. If we have our finger on the pulse, of those changes and absolute mastery of them, then the, the, the simplicity of the backcourt rule is revealed. If we don't have mastery, if, we're, if we are in doubt about the status of things as plays are developing, these plays are much harder. So let's get started with Five Play Friday. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Five Play Friday, the show where we look at plays, apply National Federation of High School Basketball rules, see what we can take from them, what we can learn, what's correct, what's incorrect, how do we evaluate plays in real time, break things down. We're looking at the positioning of the officials. Did the correct official make the correct call? And was the call correct? Greetings again, everybody. My name is Greg Austin with a betterofficial.com where we craft video to help basketball officials get better. If you're new to the show, take a moment, like, subscribe, and hit the notify bell so you don't miss out on any of our new content. Before we get started, have to thank our fantastic channel supporters, Adam Fulmore, John Terzer, Darwin Sonata, Wayzata Results, and Chris Hirano. Much appreciated and much love. If you want to buy us a coffee, there's a link in the show notes. All right, fantastic. Today we're looking at backcourt plays. It's been backcourt week here at A Better Official, Masterclass on Monday. There'll be a link above. There'll be a link above. On Wednesday, basketball rules expert, play scenarios, breaking down plays. And today we're going to put it together and look at plays, backcourt plays, see what the correct ruling is and see what the factors are that make things complex in National Federation of High School Rules. As we discussed previously in the week, the reason why backcourt calls are difficult is that multiple conditions have to be met. Even if they are all met, there may be an exception to the rule which overrides those. And these conditions being met requires us to be absolute experts at status. We have to know when team control starts, when team control ends, how a front court status is gained in the game of basketball, how backcourt status is gained, and the status of things at all time, in real time, process it all, evaluate whether the exception applies, and then make a ruling in real time. Challenging, challenging, but looking at plays is going to help us get better. All right, so before we move forward, let's take a brief 90 second look at the backcourt rule in National Federation of High School Basketball Rules. The backcourt rule in National Federation of High School Rules. Rule 9-9, 169 words, three articles, written in the legalese of the rules book. The rule itself is Article 1, which we can convert into a simple formula. A player must not be the first to touch the ball. 
equals first to touch back court. After it has been in team control in the front court equals team control on the court. If he or she last touched the ball in the front court equals last to touch front court. That's our formula. Team control on the court, last to touch front court, first to touch backcourt. If all three conditions are met without the exception, it is a backcourt violation by rule. Now, let's look at the two exceptions. Article 2. A player in the backcourt causes the ball to go frontcourt and return backcourt without touching a player. Violation by rule. Article 3. During a jump ball, a throw-in, or while on defense, a player may legally jump from the front court, catch the ball in the air, land in the back court, making a normal landing. The two exceptions. Article 2. A violation so rare it can almost be ignored. Article 3. A legal play. Very common, very important, known as the back court exception. That is our review of the back court rule. All right, fantastic. There we have it. Rule simple. There's an exception that can override. And we've what we've done with this simple formula is given us something that we could take with us onto the back uh, onto the basketball court. Do we have team control on the court? This team was the last to touch in the front court. This team was the first to touch in the back court or by rule after the ball had been in the back court. We break that down into a simple formula that we can take with us onto the basketball court. All right, let's look at our very first play. All right, fantastic. So what we have on this play, Greg's going to get a little bigger. All right, so we're looking at plays. We're saying, what is the status? Do we have team control on the court? We'll start there. We have, let's call them black, a little bit of purple maybe, I don't know. Uh, let's black is is dribbling the ball on the court in the front court. We have team control on the court. We have front court status. Ultimately, the defense deflects the ball. And what happens next? We have to look at the status of our player. 21. Is their status is 21 status front court or back court? Right. They are in the front court. By rule. They touch the basketball. Oh, don't do that. And then step in the backcourt with the basketball. This team was in team control on the court. They were the last to touch in the front court. They were the first to touch in the backcourt. This is a violation by rule. We notice our trail official here is not in fantastic position to make this call. But also we notice that they have a premature tip signal. When the ball was deflected by the defense, they give the tip signal, but the ball had not yet gained backcourt status. So our player went from front court to backcourt with the basketball. The reason I put this play first, wait, the reason I put this play first is this is a super common scenario. And this is the one where the coaches are invariably on the sidelines saying the defense tipped the ball. The defense tipped the ball, right? You see it all the time. Play all, Team is in control in the front court. The defense tips the ball. The offensive team player goes to retrieve the ball and in the front court touches the ball and then in the back court touches the ball or the defense bats the ball off of the offensive player's body it was last touched by that team in the front court and goes in the back court so 
Why we miss these plays? First of all, the rules from other levels. Other levels. National Federation of High or uh, NCAA men. The ball is tipped. The rules changes. Their backcourt rule is different. NBA. The ball is tipped. Their rule is different. National Federation of High School. That's not the case. So when does team control end? Again, we are masters of status, or we have to be masters of status. When does team control end? It ends on a try. It ends when the other team gains control, player control, which this defensive player obviously did not. Team control did not end. So we have team control on the court, last to touch in the front court, first to touch in the back court. Common play scenario, but one where officials often become confused because the status factor, the status element comes into play and they don't have command of the status in the moment, right? On this play, this official, you know, five seconds later, you know, they throw the ball into the post or what have you, and they're thinking, oh man, wait a minute, that was a backcourt violation, right? That's the challenge, taking all that information applying our complicated situation, our simple rule in a complex situation, and getting the call right. All right, let's move on to our very next play. Right. So that's a pretty simple play, play scenario, very straightforward. When on this play, uh, it's a basic te- uh, a, a basic status play in that there is team control. The try ends team control, but then team control is reestablished with the player grabbing the rebound, holding the basketball on the court, throws a pass, goes into the backcourt. Our, our offensive team was the last to touch in the fir- in the front court and the first to touch in the back court. So essentially, a pretty co- a pretty straightforward play, but one where which emphasizes again that our need to be masters of status. All right, moving on to play number three. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. I love this play. This play uh, I got from Jeff Rutledge, a fantastic possible backcourt play. What do you have on this play? It was ruled a backcourt. All right. What do we have on this play? Let's take a look. Do we have team control on the court when Black catches the ball in the court? Right? Team control in the backcourt. Black player dribbles the ball, has their body in the front court. We have a really crappy division line here. This yellow line is our division line. Not great. But does this player gain front court status? Right? The player initially. Dribbles the basketball. Let's take a look. Dribbles the basketball and picks the ball up. Does that player have front court status? By rule. That's our key question on this play. 
Does that player have front court status? Because if she did, does, then obviously the release of the pass that is caught by a teammate in the backcourt creates a violation. But this player, when does a player have front court status? When they are dribbling the basketball, it is when all three points. When they're dribbling the ball from backcourt to front court, it's when all three points of the dribble achieve front court status. Ball and both feet, the player has front court status, the ball has front court status. That doesn't happen on this play. The player dribbles with the ball maybe and the foot in the front court, but then picks up the dribble. When they pick up the dribble, what is their status? Back court or front court? If a player is in contact with the back court, their status is back court. This player with a foot, oh, wait a minute, I'm breaking it out. Here comes the arrow. Do, 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 do. This player with a foot on the division line, by rule, is in the back court, not in the front court. 95% of the player's body is over the front court. Our brain says, well, they sure seem to be in the front court, right? But that player is by rule in the backcourt. So, did the ball ever gain front court status? No. No, it did not. This is a legal play. Now, let's go back to um, Jason's comment. Not the center's call, though, but the center made a call. You are the trail on this play. What are you going to do? Great call, partner. What are you going to do? Let's say you saw the foot on the division line and they made the call. What are you going to do? What can you do? Is this a correctable error situation, right? No, not covered by rule, but is it fixable? Is it a fixable situation? Could we go to our partner and say, partner, that player never gained front court status. I know because I had primary coverage on the play. <laughs> But that player never gained front court status. What we have here is an inadvertent whistle. When the whistle blew, we had team control by the black team at a certain spot on the floor. And we're going to have a throw in at that spot. And it's black ball. That's an option. That's on the table. If we're putting the game ahead of the crew, ahead of ourselves, game crew you philosophy, then that is the thing to do. Obviously, assuming a competitive game, all things being equal, et cetera. If it was, you know, 75 to 12 here, then maybe we, hit, we take a different approach. But this is a fixable play scenario and one that it's good to get reps in this situation of fixing a play. If you have, if you have information about this play, that player had backcourt status, we could fix that play and get the call right. Great status question. But that player had backcourt status. Brad Hargrove, inadvertent whistle, genius way to correct that. It is a genius way to correct it, but imagine in the game, the play scenario comes up. And you know, I know, that was a legal play. There's a hurdle involved sometimes, especially with newer officials. It's like, well, wait a minute. I know that call is incorrect. I have information about that play, about why that call is incorrect. Can we fix it? Can we? I'm scared. I don't know. Uh, yes. Yes, we can fix it. We can go to the calling official, provide information. Partner, that player had backcourt status. Her foot was on the line, never gained front court status. Right? We'd want our, our calling official to nod their head and say, you are absolutely right. I think we have an inadvertent whistle scenario. Where are we on the court? We have the ball in the backcourt when the whistle blew. We're going to have a sideline throw, you know, da-da-da-da. We're going to fix it. We're going to own it and move forward. But we need reps. You know, one of the things is we need reps in these situations, fixing plays when we can. If we get those reps, we're so much more comfortable and able to make the correct decision in real time. So, Brad, a great comment there in the chat. Let's move on to our very next play scenario.
All right. This is a cool play. I like it. And it's one that, that when I first saw it, I was like, I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. So do we have team control on the court? Obviously, yes. We were dribbling in the back court. We throw the ball to the front court to a player with front court status. Does the ball now have front court status? Yes. Yes, it does. Player passes the ball. Foot precariously close to the division line, but may have released the pass here by the time. That's not what the call is on this play. But their pass, a bounce pass, bounces in the back court and is caught by a player in the front court. At that point, we have a backcourt ruling from the calling official. Is this a violation by rule? I think one of the reasons why it was intriguing to me, one of the reasons is, so we, we've created our shortcut, right? Our simplified formula, team control on the court, last to touch front court, first to touch back court. But the first to touch back court component isn't first to touch backcourt in actuality. It's first to touch after the ball has been in the backcourt. That's the wording of the rule. After the ball has been in the front court or in the backcourt. So we're taking a shorthand version onto the court, but we have to realize that it is a shorthand version. So our play sequence here is Front court status, last to touch in the front court, and the ball has gained back court status. Our player is the first to touch after the ball has been in the back court. Therefore, this is a back court violation by rule. So, our simplified formula, which is going to help us in real time. We have to understand that that component is shorthand. First to touch in the backcourt is first to touch after the ball has been in the backcourt. Now, the reason why we can use it as shorthand is that, think about it, how many plays like are, occur like this, where the ball goes from front court to back court to front court without touching a player? Very unusual, really limited, almost all, you know, backcourt plays are going to occur back in the backcourt. So this is, you know, this is a unique situation, one we have to be aware of, and it is a backcourt violation by rule. Fantastic job. This clip came from Rod, Rob Gross. Fantastic job making this call in real time. Uh, a kudos. All right. <clears throat> Let's move on. Next play scenario. All right, the officials rule this a legal play. Anybody have something different? The key component here is that the defensive player deflects the ball, right? It's not super obvious on the film, but right there. And the official obviously reinforces that, but right there, the player deflected the ball. You know, Red was passing to his teammate here. The ball was deflected by the defense. So that's obviously the key component on the play. Player with backcourt status grabs the ball. Ruled a legal play. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? Anybody have anything? Call correct? Call incorrect? What are the factors of the play? Let's look at our simplified formula. Do we have team control on the court? We'll start here. Do we have team control on the court? 
Yes, Red has player control. Player picks up the basketball and releases a pass to a teammate. Defender deflects the pass and causes the ball to head in the direction of the backcourt. Teammate of the thrower, while located in the backcourt, contacts the basketball and is the first to touch in the backcourt. But let's look at our simplified formula. Team control on the court, yes. First to touch in the backcourt, yes. Were they the last to touch in the front court? No. The defense deflected the basketball. Player went, gained backcourt status, and caught the basketball. Now, this play in 2007, there was, no, yes, in 2007, way back then, there was an erroneous ruling, a rules interpretation that said this is a backcourt play. That was the interpretation. If that player had allowed the basketball to bounce, then collected it, it would have been legal, etc. And the ruling is, and, and the interpretation was such that this player, when they contacted the basketball, was the last to touch in the front court and the first to touch in the back court simultaneously. It's a, it's a ruling that did, defied logic and one that caused, a couple of years ago, additional exception language to be added to the backcourt rule, which caused only more confusion about backcourt. But this play, and it was basically just to correct that rule's interpretation. This play is a legal play by rule because the player was, the team was not the last to touch in the front court. So a good play scenario, again, it's going to be a puzzler. You see this play in real time, your head's going, you know, you're, you're worrying, right? It, it's, it's a, not a common play and one that forces us to, to make a real-time decision that involves a lot of complex factors. And on these plays, as we encouraged you in the Masterclass Monday and in Basketball Rules Expert on Wednesday, if you do have a violation on a similar play with, that would be a backcourt violation, understand you're going to have processing time Embrace that fact, right? This player collects the ball in the backcourt. Let's say they dribble the ball a couple of times going in the front court, And finally, our brain says, oh, wait a minute, right? This was a backcourt fight. Not on this play, but on another play, another similar play. This was a backcourt violation. Just, just put a whistle on the play, rewind it, get the call right. Recognize it took me a long time to process that play, but... I'm going to get it right. All right. And we're moving on. Fantastic play. I love it. Again, this is going to be a high processing play. This puts all your skills as a basketball official are on the table on a play like this. You have to make <laughs> real-time judgments about plays, <laughs> and it's challenging. You just have to recognize it for what it is. All right, let's look at the play here. This player has front court status. They jump, catch the ball in the air, and land in the back court. That's a factor. Now let's rewind and go back. Do we have team control on the court by black? Pass caught by gold going out of bounds. Obviously a collegiate game. Caught by gold going out of bounds. Gold releases the ball back towards the backcourt. And our player jumps with front court status, makes a normal landing, which allows them, which causes them to land with backcourt status. That's what we have on this play. 
what is the correct ruling? The correct ruling, the court the ruling on the court was no call. Were the officials correct? Yes or no. High processing play, one that really forces us to understand status, right? We have team control on the court. When does team control end by rule, right? It ends on a try. There'd be no team control. It ends when the opponent gains control of the basketball. Does gold gain control of the basketball? Yes. Yes, they do. They catch the ball, land in bounds, release the ball on a throw, a, a pass towards the backcourt. They have gained team control. Black is no longer in con team control. Black is now on defense. What is our rules exception? What is our rules exception allowing players during a throw in, during a jump ball, or while on defense allows them to jump from their front court, catch the basketball, make a landing in the backcourt? It matters not which foot lands front court, back court simultaneously. That exception applies. So <laughs> we go back to our play. The exception applies. So no, no, not only do we have to recognize that team control has ended, we have to recognize that, oh, we can't, we can't have the rule, last, team control on the court when he caught the ball, last touch front court, that was his status, first to touch back court, yeah, got that. Okay, I got it. Yeah, oh, oh wait a minute, the exception. The exception overrides our formula. Right? Super high processing play. But this player, since they are a player on defense, is allowed to catch the ball in the air and make a normal landing. And that's what occurred on this play. The officials were correct. It, but again, imagine this is your play. You are on the court and all these things are happening. This is a super high processing play. We have to recognize that. We have to be prepared. But all the preparation in the world, this play breaks out in front of you. It's going to require processing time. So let's look at what point would you not be able to blow the whistle? If you did, if you were Jay, if you're Jason, you have a backcourt play here. You process, process, process. Could you blow the whistle here? Yes. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. The world has not would not end if you made the call here. If obviously there's some period of time that could pass before we could make before we could no longer make the call. I mean, if they score a goal, <laughs> they score a goal and we're going the other way. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had a violation back there, right? But recognize that in these first couple of seconds, which when you're on the court will seem like an eternity, an eternity. I can't blow my whistle now. Yes, yes, you can. Put the whistle on the play. And again, it's a situation where we get reps, right? The first time we did this, right, where, where a couple of seconds had passed, it seemed like forever. First time I did it, I was like super nervous. You do it a couple of times, you get more comfortable and more comfortable, and I'll own it. Yes, that's a backcourt, you know, it's not on this play. But if it was, yes, that's a backcourt violation. Yes, it took me time to process. Yes, but the call correct is correct, coach, right? And we move forward. All right. So the initial clip, very closed in view, looks like an obvious backcourt violation. A player catches the ball and with front court status, steps into the backcourt. But then with the expanded view, we realize, oh, wait a minute, this was a throw-in play, right? This, this clip got a lot of attention last year and a couple years ago, right? The player clearly catches the ball in the air with front court status and lands in the backcourt. Obvious, Sim super simple. But once we realize that it's a throw-in play, the exception applies. In the previous play, Jay said, uh, Jason says, I had it wrong. I was thinking the exception only applies on inbounds plays, and that's fair. Here's our inbounds play. 
we know the exception applies. What I find is, though, that sometimes on inbounds plays that cover a lot of distance on the court, these kind of play, you know, if this if this play just if the thrower was at the division line, our brain aligns better that this is the exception applies. Sometimes when the distance is greater, like we're throwing it in from the end line, and there's a player jump from the back court to front court our brain kind of loses track of the fact that it was a throw-in. So that's a thing. But this play is a legal play. We're using the throw-in exception. A player may jump during a jump ball while on defense or during a throw-in. May jump from their front court, grab the ball, make a normal landing. And if that landing causes them the back court, the exception says that is a legal play. But this will put a bow on our backcourt week where we had a master class. We explained the rule. We explained the simplicity of the rule and the complexity of the situation due to the processing involved. We have to evaluate a lot of factors, multiple factors related to the rule, whether or not the exception applies, and we have to be masters of status the ever-changing status on the court, backcourt, frontcourt, team control, no team control. We have to be experts in order to process these plays in real time. And doing so is just going to be challenging. That's just the bottom line. We have to recognize that, build in a little buffer time that allows us to uh, be comfortable processing and making the correct ruling on plays. Hey, thanks for joining us today on Five Play Friday. Hope you found value and can take something from the video scenarios and our rules discussion and bring it into your game so that you can be a better basketball official. Now would be a great time to do all the things. If you haven't already, hit like, subscribe, or hit like, subscribe, and notify so you don't miss out on any of our new content. And share the video with other basketball officials who could find value have to thank our fantastic channel supporters Adam Fulmore, John Terzer, Darwin Sonata, Wayzata Results, and Chris Hirano. If you want to support the show, you can always buy us a coffee at abetterofficial.com slash coffee. There'll be a link above. All right, thanks for joining us today. That additional video content is here. Our previous basketball rules expert and the entire playlist. We'll see you in the very next video. Take care.